Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. We hope you're doing great. We're continuing on with our Demo to Master series where we take a demo that an artist gave us or tracks they gave us, they're pre-pro. And then we move on to a completely finished master and we take you through each of the steps and talk you through what we did and our interaction with the client and how we brought it to become a real record. So we hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please subscribe, hit the like button. We appreciate your support. And hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we have more content like this coming. So session number 10, our lead vocals. They've been all melodyned and reprinted. So here's what I would do and here's how, how we did it. So you can see here we have a lead vocal track. Now before in the last video we had it, it was a stereo track. We had all these stereo lead vocal tracks, right? So to reduce them down to mono, I just created an aux send and the aux send has processing on it for the vocalist that it went through. So I have everything patched in, it's in a mono aux. I send it to that, then I bounce it to an audio track. So when it's all done, I get it in Melodyne and I tune it. We don't have to go too heavy on it, these are really good singers, but it just helps, tightens it up a little. And then, like I said in the last session, I really like this purple. And I put that on a bunch of the vocals to help out. So let's hear it and see what we have now that it's all sort of in place. In your own mind. You were the kid with a lot to learn. Spit by a fool who would crash and burn out on his own. Every time. Rough and tumble on the street. So this is just the lead singer and his vocals tuned. And it's do or die, it's all on the line. So that's pretty cool. And at the end, he did this killing ad libs. Do or die, it's do or die. It's all on the line. So that's all of the lead singer's parts melodyned and reprinted through our analog chain and scooted around and finessed the way we want them. This is session ele number 11. This is all the lead vocalist parts, all of the Nashville vocalist parts, all melodyned, printed through my analog gear, reduced to mono when necessary, and scooted around so it all makes sense time-wise. Here to see if you got the stuff Is it your time to shine a diamond in the rough? Are you tough enough? And it's do or die It's all on the line Gotta come put up or just shut up So it's pretty happening, it's nice and big So now let's check out our final session before we mix so I always call this session my mix ready session. So I go through the session, I make all my crossfades, consolidate things, I get rid of any unused audio, any unused playlists, I clean out the audio bin, and then I just see what's gonna be in the session. It's very simple. Then I check it one more time, make sure everything's there that we need, and there it is. It's a lot of stuff. So let's take a listen to that from that same spot. Born with an attitude, trash talker thinking you could never lose. Loud and edgy and a legend in your own mind. Cool, so now there's a whole thing in the middle that we didn't check out before. All the guitars. So Dan did that little acoustic guitar part, the 16th note rhythm for motion. So I came up with this. Fairly boring alone, right? But when you add the delay, gives you a little bit of like the motion that Dan wanted, a little more modern edge kind of thing. Now we've carried it through to the chorus. So, same kind of sound, a little brighter. So let's hear that little bit together in context. 
here to see if you got the stuff Is it your time to shine a diamond in the rough? Are you tough enough? And it's do or die It's all on the So they're really simple parts. It's a few notes per part, two, three. Some are distorted and low, some are mid-range, some are higher, some have delay. So it's, it's just kind of finding your spot frequency-wise, register-wise, and arrangement-wise. So at the very end chorus... So a higher register part that lifts the last chorus, it's a hook in itself and it's very repetitive and I'm trying not to move the notes too much. So that's my 12th session and we're mix ready. So the next thing we're going to do is open up our mix session and take a look. Not so much to analyze the mix, I will do a deep dive video where we analyze what I did in the mix. But So if you're tuning into this series of videos, you're probably more interested in the production aspect, which is what we're going to cover. We have the mix ready session, it's all clean, everything's cleaned out. Everything that we don't need is gone. Everything that we might use in the mix is in there. I import everything from the mix ready session. And then I import everything from my mix template, which is why if you're looking at my screen now, you can see it's taken a while to load up because it's a huge template. So I run the two channels out of my summing mixers back analog into a Burl B2 bomber, which comes out digitally and feeds back to my Lynx Auroras and then prints it back into Pro Tools. So that's what you see right here. That's my print back of the session. Then I have my mix aux, and on my mix aux, I have different things on the two bus, which I've covered in other videos. Then I have um, VCA masters, and I'll, you'll see these moving up and down. I use them to create even more dynamics in the song. So I may drop verses a little bit and then boost the choruses. Sometimes I'll boost, you'll see right in here, the downbeat just of, of the chorus will get boosted. So in the same way, we work the tempo a little bit to make the song grow, and then we work the arrangement we can work the automation to do the same thing. The automation can make all the transitions happen. So if you look down here, these are all my side chains. So you notice they get boosted in the choruses. These are mainly the drum side chains. And then these are the vocal side chains. So I'll ride these down in the verses and boost them up in the chorus if necessary. It all depends on the vocalist. I have three different ones. They're for three different flavors. So my lead vocal aux master here We'll have a bunch of processing on it. I'll break that down real quick. So the reason I have this aux master like this is if I have a continual vocal performance that was comped and tuned and sounds great like this one, before I engage in automation, uh, I like to let the client hear where I'm going. So I'll split up the vocal. So there might be one track just for the verses, one for the pre's, one for the chorus, one for the bridge, depending upon what the song needs. If the levels are all fairly continuous, I'll just leave it on one. But I want to have that option. I'll send them here. And on this channel, I use this Phoenix tape emulator, which really sounds good on vocals. I've refound this, and I'm a fan again, the Slate Digital Virtual Channel Strip. What I've been doing on my mixes is I've been putting it on the API console on all my subs. And then I usually have a Brainworks SSL on each channel, as if I was running through a console. A Fab Filter for a little high-low filtering. Then my Manly Elop I went through, and my Liaison which means I probably didn't print through that. I'm just doing it now. And then my favorite for the high-end sweetness, this guy, the SEQ, Sound Toys SEQ, modeled after the Siemens. And then I have all of my effects sends here, and you can see they're all automated. So they vary and change throughout the song. So you may feel like you're closer in the verses, further, you know, the chorus gets a little more reverb. Then you'll see the drums, and you can see written back, and here is the, those, those uh, great outlines are the automation from the VCAs. So as we come down here, we'll also see something that we didn't see before. I have numerous bass tracks. The DI gets copied, and then it gets an SVT treatment, and then it gets a Sans amp, which is kind of like the SVT, but a little different. And then it gets a B15 for some meat in the low end. So here you'll see a decapitator on the piano, which you didn't think I would probably have, but I'm really trying to introduce some sort of um, harmonic coloration to make things feel a little more analog. You know, it might be more cranked up a little more on the organ to make the organ actually sound a little distorted. Because, And you'll see this plug-in all over my sessions, auto-align. And I use that to phase align the drums and the drum mics, but then I have found it really works with other instruments and their interaction with the drums and their interaction with each other. So I'll play a little bit of the verse going into the second chorus, and I'll jump a little bit out of the chorus into the bridge. 
Jump ahead to the chorus into the bridge. Bridge. So you can even hear there on the word on, there's a delay throw. So these are all things to keep interest. So this was a guitar session that turned into a full production. So that was Demo to Master, our second video in the series, Do or Die by Dan Young. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, leave some comments, leave some questions. Thanks again. Thanks so much. See you soon.